There's lots of different ways to play certain notes on the saxophone using alternative fingerings, but imagine if there was one simple fingering that could convert really simple shapes and entire scales into more complex ones. Well, that's what we're going to look at today. We're going to look at the technique of a very certain key and it's not talked about a lot. So let's get into it. So it's really important as a sax player to know the options we've got technically on the instrument for different notes. Not only can they get us out of some sticky technical situations, but they can also give us different nuances in tone and sound. Some give us a really smooth sound to notes. Some give us a really efficient way of moving around the horn, but they're all worth knowing for different reasons. <laughs> Some examples you might already be familiar with are things like front F. But did you know there's actually five or six ways of playing top F on the saxophone? There's also buttons like side C. Really useful if you want a smoother sound between a B and a C on the saxophone because it can sound a little bit robotic moving between those two keys, particularly if you've got to do it repetitively. And probably one of the most common ones you've come across is Biz B flat or Button B flat. And this is a really useful key because it allows you to put your finger in a slightly different position and then Basically, ignore the key signature. So if you've got a key signature that has B flats in it, like F major or B flat major or E flat major, then by putting your finger in the same normal B position, but just covering this little button, means you can forget all about that accidental and just carry on with your playing. As an example, I could turn this G major triad into this G minor triad. And that's what's really meant by a biz key. It's just a key that actually creates a permanent accidental in your technique. By the way, if you're interested in improving your technique, I do a course every second Tuesday of the month in SAT school called Technique Tuesdays. We go through everything from embouchure to finger positions, stance, and lots of great stuff like we're talking about today. So if you're interested, there's still a 14 day free trial. Just click below. And that's what's meant by a biz key. It's just a fingering that creates a permanent accidental in your technique and allows you to forget about that to some degree while you're playing. However, there's a second biz key and that's what we're going to talk about today. <laughs> So we're going to start off with something really, really simple. We're going to start off with a blues scale. Now, if you're into improvisation, one of the first thing most people learn is the blues scale. They might learn a D or a G or a C blues scale. We're going to start with a C blues scale, and we're just going to play it first of all in the bottom octave of the saxophone, and then we're going to do something to it to change it into a completely different scale using a very special key and one that I don't think's talked about half as much as it should be. First of all, let's just make sure we're familiar with the notes of a C blues scale. So I'd like to slowly work through the notes of that scale with you now. So starting off, we've got the first three notes. We've got low C, E flat and F. So let's play those together. <laughs> 
Okay, so next, starting on that last note we finished on, the F, we're going to go F, up to the F sharp, and up to the G. So let's try that. Great, now let's put the whole thing together. So we're going to have low C, E flat, F, F sharp, G. And this is the one flat three, four, the classic flat five from the blue scale up to the natural five. And that's what happens in the right hand when we're playing this scale. And by the way, this is a really good way of looking at technique on the saxophone. What does your right hand do and what does your left hand do? I've got an entire methodology built around this way of approaching the saxophone. And I talk about this a lot in the lessons on sax school. So continuing with the C blue scale, let's have a look what the left hand does. So we'll start with that G again and we're going to get G. B flat. Now you can play this in two different ways. You could play it with the B flat bis key, which is the way I'd recommend doing it. Or if you're more comfortable with it, you can play it with the side B flat. However, to me, I feel the side B flat fingering is more of an A sharp fingering, and it's really to get a clean movement from B flat to B or vice versa. And if you're not needing to do that, I'd suggest using the bis key. But we're all different in the way that we approach that key and that's absolutely fine. So we're going to play the G, the B flat bis key, or your side A sharp, and then we're going to jump up to the C. So let's have a go at that. Brilliant. So now we've got all the notes of a C blue scale. So we're just going to add one extra note into it at this point, and we're going to add just an open C sharp right above that C in the octave. And strange as this may seem, you'll see the point in a minute. So let's try that whole thing, just adding an extra C sharp at the top. <laughs> So I'd recommend repeating that up and down a few times and just getting really comfortable with it. You could even try it over a couple of octaves and make sure your fingers are nice and locked to those notes. And remember, you can think about it as locking in that shape in your right hand and then that shape in your left hand. And if you don't adhere to that shape, then you're not playing the right notes of that blues scale. Okay, so now we get to the magic key that's going to convert this C blue scale, albeit with this extra C sharp in it, into something completely different. And this key is another biz key. It's the low C sharp key. Now you may say, Joel, it's just a low C sharp key. It's what I use for low C sharps. But it's a really underrated and underused key in a lot of other contexts. So basically, I want you to push down that low C sharp key which is the outer bell key just below the G sharp. And I want you to keep it held down for the entirety when you now play that blue scale with the extra C sharp, just to see what you get. So let's try that together, just one octave up and down. <laughs> Now, it may have felt a little bit strange holding down that key for the entirety of that blue scale, but I'm sure your ears told you you ended up with a very familiar type of scale and not a blue scale. In fact, what you've just played is a C-sharp major scale. To most, generally considered a really difficult scale on the instrument and one that people avoid all the time, but it's only one key away from being a C blue scale. So... I love this little tip and it just shows you the power of understanding the mechanics and the technique of the saxophone in a realistic, appliable way. Just putting down that one C sharp key turns a C blue scale into a C sharp major scale. 
who'd have thought it? So let's try it now over a couple of octaves and see what that feels like. <laughs> Now, why does this work? Well, it works because when you press down the low C sharp key, it does two things. Not only does it give you the obvious, a low C sharp, but it also gives you permanent G sharps all the time. And you'll find a lot of big players, especially people with bigger hands, often use the C sharp key as a replacement G sharp. In fact, you don't need the G sharp key at all. You could always use the C sharp key if you wanted to. Now, the interesting thing about all these bell keys and the G sharp key is really their first usage is a G sharp. So you could play a low B fingering and a G fingering and you get a G sharp or a low B flat, you get a G sharp or the G sharp key. It doesn't matter which key you use. So their primary function are G sharp keys and then they have a secondary function, which is low C sharp, low B, low B flat, but you could use any of them. And you'll notice that if you press down any of those buttons, the G sharp key goes down automatically with it. Now there are some older horns where this action isn't available, uh, but it can be added to those saxophones if you want it. And it's a really useful thing to have because it can convert a C blue scale into a C sharp major scale, and that's really useful. So using this key for anything that has constant G sharps or C sharp, so A major, E major, B major, F sharp major, C sharp major, is really useful to do and particularly if you're playing quite fast passages because it's efficient you're not taking your finger on and off that key all the time or trying to switch up to a g sharp and back down to a c sharp you can just keep your finger on it becomes a low c sharp g sharp biz key it permanently changes the key signature or the accidental of those notes on the instrument <laughs> Now, it feels a little bit weird in the left hand holding that down. You can get used to it very quickly, actually, with a bit of practice. But obviously, it doesn't matter if you let go of that key. It's just that you keep resting over it while you play so you can get back to it quickly. And you're not alternating constantly between G sharps and C sharps. And you can see that this could be really useful if you want to play low C sharp to a G sharp directly between the two, because otherwise it's impossible to do. You'll notice on the saxophone there is no roller between those two keys, so it feels very clunky and your finger can get stuck and all that kind of stuff, which none of us want, and it won't sound very good. And it's because you don't need to do it. You just keep that C sharp held down. So here's a couple of other examples I could take for example, a C major seven shape. Now, if I add the low C sharp, G sharp, biz key to it, then it becomes a C sharp minor seven shape. So once again, it converts something that's maybe one of the first chord tone types that you've learned into one that maybe you've been avoiding for a while. So it's a really useful key and one to constantly bear in mind when you're in key signatures that require these accidentals. So if you enjoy this kind of content, don't forget to subscribe and click the like button and then you'll be notified about all upcoming things in Sat School. Sat School's a great place to learn everything saxophone. There's literally thousands of lessons and there's still a 14 day free trial. So just click the link below. So let me know in the comments if you've ever used that key in this context before. I'd be really interested to see how many of you out there actually already use it in this way. And if not, it's a new bit of technique to get into your playing. And it really helps some of those more awkward key signatures and arpeggios. If you want to grab a copy of the backing track I've been using throughout this, you can get it in Sat School. Just follow the link below. 
I've specifically designed the backing to help you practice this exact technique. So the first chord C minor 7 and you can play the C blue scale over that and the second chord G sharp 7 sus and basically you're playing C sharp major or G sharp mixolydian over that so it gives you some context to practice this technique. And also there's a little resources handout on the stuff that I've talked about today in this lesson. So until the next lesson, take care and I'll see you then. Bye bye. Thank you.